This is a companion video for the Despira astronomy activity called Observing Celestial Coordinate Systems Using Stellarium. Uh, the previous activity in this sequence was an activity about coordinate systems in general, uh, and it was very informational. Uh, this is an opportunity for the kids to take that information and vocabulary and actually play with it a little bit in an interactive planetarium environment where they can manipulate things. Uh, much more enjoyable for them. So let's get right into it. Uh, Stellarium is a very good uh, online free planetarium uh, software package, and they do have a web version. I just use the term Stellarium online as word search. It takes me right to the web version that's online. There is a downloadable version, which is uh, much more powerful. Uh, let's just look at the space that's available. Uh, it would be my suggestion for any teacher to spend maybe about a half hour in this space, bouncing around, toggling things, just to get a feel for the space so that if you go in and do the activity with the students, and some students will be able to go all the way through it without any help, others will run into points of confusion. You would like to have that little head start on them. Uh, so let's just kind of look around. Uh, this is the star field picture right here. There's this banner window, which is best to get rid of. But uh, before we do that, there is something in here that you need to see. Uh, with this, it's nice to put the coordinate systems we've talked about on the screen as well as the star field. Uh, and hiding inside here is one of the very important lines that we have in uh, the local sky. You have the horizon that's all around us. The zenith is the highest point directly overhead, and the meridian line is that north-south line that runs overhead. When I click that, I see the green line come up. Uh, there it is right through north in this particular picture. So I'm going to turn it back off so we can look at one thing at a time. I will close that window, and we will go full screen to get rid of that Google bin. So... Uh, here's the sky, and my silhouetted horizon right there. Uh, you can click and drag. It looks like I clicked just about on the Big Dipper right there. Uh, you can see some of the brighter stars have names on them. Active satellites are moving, uh, and it does look like it's moving. If I look down at the clock here, I see that the clock is ticking away at real time. Uh, let's just kind of take a look at this right now. So you can manipulate the time. Uh, this is not the current time. Uh, and very often if the kids play around and they get lost and they want to come back to a now, this little button will be now. Uh, so here it is about 9.20 on July 8th. Uh, we can see the sky is getting darker. The sun just went down here. This is a nice little feature right here, but we'll talk about that in a second. What I'd like to do first is kind of, uh, you know, I want to know what's in the sky. And the sun is a big block. If the sun's up, we're not seeing the other things. So this atmosphere button will kind of turn the atmosphere off. And uh, that allows us to see what is in the sky at any given time, even when the sun is out. So let's go back into here. I'm going to just, I'm going to just stop the time right now. And uh, so you can, with ups and down toggles here, it's, it's slightly annoying. You can't type in a time or date that you want, but it's, it's easy to manipulate around. Uh, and I, I like this slider. It's a 24-hour slider, so you just kind of uh, do that. And you, know, you could ask the kids to do this and look around. You see all the stars seem to be, as I move forward, seem to be coming down. So let's look this way and play with the little slider. And, oh, well, is there a star that, uh, if I look at that, do it really fast, it looks like there's a star that's not moving. That's interesting. Okay. We all know what that star is. And when they start exploring the uh, different coordinate systems, the first one they'll come across is the equatorial coordinate system. Now, uh, before we, well, I just, I just toggled on that. But uh, something else that's important, this was the time window over here. And this is the location window. So uh, 
most computers seem to know where you are these days, so it's kind of zoomed in. I happen to be in Morgantown, uh, West Virginia right now, filming this, so it seems to know that. Uh, you can change the location either by search or by map. The thing that uh, most of us, uh, I tend to do is want to click on it. I want to go to Cumberland. Uh, if I click on it, it won't change the location. I have to click and drag this little device over. And if I want it, I can use this location. I'm just going to leave it, stay where I am. So that's important because that allows this to be very adjustable to wherever you are in California or in Maine. Uh, you can see what your sky looks like. So the equatorial mount is going to be important. It's that projection of the Earth's latitude and longitude system onto the celestial sphere. So we have a North Pole on the Earth. The celestial sphere has the celestial North Pole, and the pole star happens to be very near. It, and we can see that now. So if I click on it, you click on any object in the sky, the information dialog box will come up. So, uh, and, and for this activity, the right ascension and declination, the position in that system is here, the position in the local sky is here. Those numbers are going to be important for the activities. The kids will be coming in and getting that. Uh, there's also the ability to center the object, just so that we can see that again. If I click on any object and hit this little center button, it'll bring it to the center of the screen. Uh, we were looking at Polaris before, so we'll bring that to the center, like so. Uh, toggling this off and putting this system on would be the uh, local sky system, the azimuthal grid, as they call it here, azimuth and altitude. So the altitude is zero at the horizon and goes up to 90 at the zenith point. The zenith is not marked, not labeled, but it is a vocabulary word and easy to identify in this space. Uh, so that's, that's basically the stuff that you need for this activity. There's obviously constellations and constellation pictures uh, that can be added, and the, the kids will be toggling all these things and learning uh, very quickly. So uh, hopefully you found this activity helpful as a first tutorial, but also please uh, spend some time and play around in this space.